back to Real English with Real Teachers. Today we are live. I am uh, live from the Basque country of Spain. Wow, I'm in the Basque country. And Charlie is over in Australia. And today we're talking about holidays because I'm on holiday. I'm having a bloody, a bloody lovely holiday. And Charlie's life is basically just one long holiday. He's always moving from place to place. So we thought we would give you some tips about traveling. And within those tips, um, we're going to give you some, some, some idioms, some expressions, some phrases that we use in British English. And we're just going to converse about this topic. So if you're watching us live, we want to see you participating, writing in your questions, writing in your responses and, you know, participating to the max. So uh, I'm going to give it over to my my good old friend Charlie now from live from Australia. Charlie, how are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good down under. Um, when you were talking about uh, going on holiday, I appreciate that you you think my my life is one big holiday. I don't necessarily think that. Uh, I feel like I do do some work, but I do love it. I do love my my work and my life. But we went to Sydney recently. We we went on a holiday um, to Sydney, and as soon as I got there, I felt like it was chock a block. It was it was really chock a block. So. Um, yeah, yeah, it was very different to where my sister lives, which is on the Gold Coast. So it's a little bit more calm, and and everybody has their space. But yeah, it really felt like it was a chocker block. Chocker block. Okay, so if a place is chocker block, straight away that means that it's really, really, really busy. Could be talking about a city. Uh, Sydney is chocker block. London is chocker block. Bangkok. That is chock a block and that rhymes. Chock a block, Bangkok. Could be a good way to remember it. Hong Kong is also chock a block. My God, the air have you seen about the airport in Hong Kong? What's happening at the moment? I have, yes, that's terrible. That is really, really bad. Um, really bad. So, so if the flights have been cancelled, I imagine that the terminal is chock a block. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it looks it looks um, like a hard time. If you are a follower from Hong Kong. We wish you all the best. We hope this um, protesting settles down and the police stop hitting people in such a violent way. Um, but here we have an example. So the market is chock-a-block on weekends. The market is chock-a-block on weekends. And Charlie, you you said a really good um, word. The, well, something that made me laugh. He said, I do do some work. I do do. I thought that's funny how he said do do, right? Because some yeah. people might think, why the hell did he say do two times? But, you know, that's very, it's very typical to say that kind of thing, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. And it almost sounds like the American American word for poo, a doo-doo, a doo-doo, I think. Yeah, I did a doo-doo. I did a doo-doo. Yeah, yeah I, did, I did a doo-doo, yeah. So if you want to emphasize something, if someone says, like, oh, Charlie, you never work, you're always on holiday then you can add do before the verb to emphasize um, that what the other person said is incorrect. So if you disagree with it, no, I do do work or I, I do work. I do yeah. work. Yeah, I do work. Back off. Yeah. Or I do do some work. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you do some work today? I did do some work today. Yes. Yeah, did you, you did. do any work today? I didn't. No, I didn't actually. I've worked. It's, it's only 10.45 and I'm technically on holiday. Oh, I mean, yes. I was the day up is young. Yeah, the day, oh, the day is young. The day is young. Put it in. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, you're on it. You're on it. The day is young. It means the morning or you've got a lot left in the day. So you could use this phrase if, if you're trying to calm somebody down about having not done enough. So it's okay, it's okay. The day is young, we've got time. And you can say the night is young as well, can't you? You could, yeah. You could say, why are we still in this pub? I want to dance. You could say, <laughs> it's okay, the night is young. There's still time to dance, chill out. Yeah, I want to be in a chocker block nightclub. It's all right, calm down, the night is young. We will get to that. 
Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's bring on the lovely sponsor of the video. Uh, so the sponsor of today is Lingoda. Lingoda are doing a language marathon and Harry participated in the last one. I think he's still going on it, uh, but we'll hear about that shortly. Uh, but basically, it's an online language learning platform. If you've never heard of it, it's one of the best places to go to to immerse yourself in another language when you can't physically be in that country. To get online and speak to natives teaching the language. And most of the time, it's in a group class. So you can meet other learners and experience the journey together. And this marathon lasts for three months. That's right. That's right. Um, so the, the next the next marathon, um, it, it's basically it's a way of of challenging you to use a language daily um, because that is the best way to become to really to become fluent in a language. You need to be using the language a lot. You need to really be engaging with it on a regular basis so that using those words, speaking the language becomes habitual. It becomes a daily natural process. And the Lingo to Language Marathon is challenging you to do that. It's, it's incredible. So I've been doing it in the last marathon with my Spanish. Now I'm in Spain and I feel so much more comfortable starting conversations with people. Like yesterday, I went to, went to the coast and I was making conversations with people, just random people on the street, um, which is so fun. That's what I like to do in English. If I go on a holiday on my own and I want to talk, I'm talking in English, I like to start conversations with people. And I wanted to be able to do that with Spanish, but I've never really felt comfortable enough to do that. Now I do feel uh, more comfortable doing it because using the language has been a part of my my day to day life for the first for the last uh, three months. So it's it's really benefited me a lot. So it's going to help you with your confidence, with your vocabulary, your fluency, pronunciation, everything. But on top of that, if you get to the end of the marathon and you take a lesson every day for three months, or you could do the half marathon and you take 15 lessons a month for three months, if you complete that and do the full marathon, they will give you all of your money back. So not only have you improved your um, your abilities in the language and become more fluent, more confident, but also they'll give you all that money back. So you can then spend it on whatever you like. Maybe you could take a trip to England and practice those skills in the country that you've been you know, learning their language. Half marathon, they will give you half your money back. So another good option if you uh, you don't have time for a lesson every single day. So really cool, really cool. When is it starting, Charlie? I think we have a page to show, don't we? Yes, we do. I'll share that now. Um, so it is starting um, the 23rd of September, uh, but you want to get your entry in before the end of... The 9th of September. The 9th. So, there you go. So if you, if you get your... Um, if you, enter using our code in the description box below it will get you ten dollars off uh, the entry um so just click that link below use the code that you see below sign up before september the 9th and tell us how the experience is for you i think i think it's a, an amazing an amazing offer um but also i'm really impressed by the teachers they're great they're really 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 good good quality nice. teachers really so, yeah. nice Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy that. And uh, let's get back to some travel phrases. As uh, Harry said, he is in the Basque country in Spain. And um, yeah, I wanted to know if, um, if he's uh, feeling like places that you go to are affordable. Are they affordable, Harry? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, for, for me as an English person, the pound goes a long way here. Mm. The pound goes a long way, meaning with the pound, with a pound, I can buy quite a lot. Well, probably not a pound, maybe like three pounds. I could buy quite a lot. So the pound goes a long way. Um, like if I, last night I had a, a huge sandwich 
and um, some patatas bravas for my dinner and a beer. And it came to 10, 10 euros, 10 oh, euros, wow. which okay. is amazing. But in, in England, that would, firstly, it wouldn't be a very nice sandwich. No. Uh, the patatas bravas would be rubbish. Um, and the beer would, would be massive um, and uh, probably not as cold. And it would have cost me three times as much. So, yes, it's very affordable here. It's very affordable here. And don't we have an expression for that, Charlie? We certainly do. Yeah. If it's really affordable, uh, like I, I remember you said you went to Thailand and you found that it was dirt cheap everywhere you went. So the food was dirt cheap. The drink was dirt cheap. Any other activities you did was dirt cheap. Yeah. I hope you're not implying that I, I participated in any no, naughty activities. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Yeah. But to be fair, the massages are dirt cheap as well. Um, but obviously, I didn't have any uh, dirty massages. Uh, whatever a dirty massage is, I wouldn't know. But there you go. So the food is dirt cheap in Thailand. The food is dirt cheap in Thailand. Maybe you guys in the comments tell us what is dirt cheap in your country? Um, what things are dirt cheap? Is it the food, the travel, buses? I took a bus yesterday. Uh, it was it was dirt cheap, Charlie. I went to went to the coast. It cost me like two two euros. Two euros to the coast. Fan bloody fantastic. That is dirt cheap. Yeah, that's really nice. And I saw a post on Instagram, so it looked like uh, it was quite a peaceful place, meaning that it it wasn't very busy. Certainly didn't look chocker block. And maybe it was off the beaten track. Ooh, very good, very good. Yes, it was. It was off the beaten track. Off the beaten track. So this is something uh, that we that we say when we talk about um, places that are not frequently visited. Places that people they're not very touristic or touristy places. So it was. Yeah, it was a bit off the beaten track. It wasn't just full of tourists. It certainly wasn't full of English people. It's not the kind of place that English people um, find out about. It was touristy in that Spaniards go there on holiday to visit there, but not. Okay. you don't find like lots of Chinese people with their selfie sticks um, or English people with their selfie sticks. You know, the, the real big travellers like, like us and the Chinese, you didn't see many of us there. Apart from my, I was there, obviously. Ah. Mm. Okay, okay. And uh, would you say that most people want to find somewhere that is off the beaten track when they go traveling? Mm, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people, if you want a more authentic experience um, of the place, I, I try to, but then my friend Chris, for example, he never does. He will go to a resort in Spain and just kind of stay there he won't he, he said to me the last time i met up with him oh the full english breakfast are terrible in spain <laughs> what, what the hell do you expect what are you doing with your life okay so harry's not a fan of uh taking culture your own culture to another country if you're there to experience the other country yeah no it's ridiculous what do you, what do you think about that would you would you go to spain and have a full english breakfast no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, I I probably have in the past when I was going on holiday with my parents, um, but it was more of a resort holiday and I didn't really know what I wanted in life. Now I do. I probably wouldn't order a full English breakfast. Don't you worry, Harry. So you'd, you'd probably say you'd probably say something like this, wouldn't you? Let's find somewhere off the beaten track. Oh, where <laughs> should we eat? Where should we eat today, Charlie? Um, I don't know, but not. Let, let's not go to a chain. Let's not be too obvious. Let's find somewhere off the beaten track. There you go. Very good. So yeah. the way we can use it in a sentence, quite typical like this, find somewhere off the beaten track. Um, it's like an adjective. It's an off the beaten track restaurant. Find somewhere off the beaten track. Um, but then we could use it with the verb go. Let's, let's, we went off the beaten track. Right, yeah. we went off the beaten track to um, yeah. find an interesting restaurant. Yeah, and I've been asking, do you like to go off the beaten track? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nice. And 
and we can use it with the verb to be as well it it was off the beaten track this place uh -huh. was off the beaten track lovely very nice very nice. what about you charlie do you go off the beaten track nowadays when you when you go on your holidays uh yeah i do i like a bit of comfort now i think i went through a phase when i came out of university i really wanted to go off the beaten track and i went on a really adventurous trip i took a bike uh down the whole coast the the west coast of france with my friend and we just had a tent on our back and not on our back on on the back of the bike and uh it, I mean, it gets, <laughs> get, you were get riding. sweaty get very sweaty yeah uh, so we were literally just parking up and finding anywhere that we could and we were incredibly off the beaten track but i think nowadays uh when we when i travel with stacy we want a bit more comfort so it's it's a little bit between the both between both of them a bit of balance okay so you have the best of both worlds oh very good it's going in the phrase box uh to have the best of both worlds fairly self-explanatory isn't it yeah yeah so charlie has a bit of this a, a bit of the touristy stuff bit of the off the beaten track authentic stuff so he has the best of both worlds Mm, it's good yeah very yeah. good um, and we had, we had some good examples in charlie um so lorenzo has said um ha lovely lovely suit by the way lorenzo absolutely lovely suit you've got there nice red tie <laughs> having a coffee in italy is dirt cheap nice. yes it is it's also pretty um pretty cheap or i wouldn't say it's dirt cheap in sydney a coffee yeah. is really cheap and sydney's very expensive so it's quite a surprise no shit. Yeah. So I think Australians are very good with their coffee. Just just putting it out there. Oh, just putting it out there. So just oh. making a suggestion. Just, just making a suggestion. Put, put something out there. Mm. That's that's a good one. Let's put something yeah. out there. But thank you, Lorenzo. And then we've got um, from Hasir. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, over... <laughs> <laughs> over how dare you how dare you teacher just he's put just putting something, something out there yeah so, well, i'm just gonna put this you... out there <laughs> oh my god donna is dirt cheap with an a c h e a p in turkey which is uh which is our traditional food or which is their traditional food yeah yeah we had some um we had some no, i'm thinking of greece actually we had some tzatziki in greece that was dirt cheap tzatziki yeah we did have tzatziki which is totally different uh to... I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of the falafel the wrap the, yeah and then i was like oh no it was the tzatziki that was cheap yeah we we had um tzatziki. <laughs> yeah we had some beer that was dirt cheap didn't we yeah yeah okay but someone said to to see um a doctor it is dirt cheap in Taiwan. That's interesting. So does that mean that uh, there's a lot of medical tourism in Taiwan? I'd like to know. Maybe we could come there. Maybe we. Maybe could... I could get my hair implants. Okay, I was going to say some breast implants, but yeah. <laughs> Any sure. implants will be fine. Any, yeah. yeah. Well, let's do. I think next time we last last Ruot trip. You see the acronym. I don't know how to point the root trip. Uh, we went to 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 to, 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 to Russia, um, and it wasn't a medical holiday. Maybe the next one could be a medical holiday to Taiwan. Oh, there we go. Yes, thank you very much. So, uh, Harry, you're abroad right now. Uh, yeah. Do you have your wits about you? Do you have your wits about you? It's always very important when you travel to have your wits about you. And yeah, I absolutely do. Um, so when I'm walking around in busy places, especially Bilbao, Bilbao is a busy city. It's the capital of the Basque country of Spain, the Basque region in the north. Um, and it's important to have your wits about you um, when you are on the metro, for example. It gets very busy and you need to be aware of your surroundings be aware of your surroundings and your possessions so that means to have your wits about you be aware of your surroundings 
or you need to have your wits about you when you're on the underground. Yeah, or when you're on the metro. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When do you? So it's good advice, isn't it? It's good advice. Oh, have you? Sure. You could just say to someone, "Oh, yeah, yeah, the metro is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very cheap, but have your wits about you. Have your mm. wits. About you? Like seriously. Yeah. Have yeah. Your wits about you. Yeah. When you go to the festival, have a good time, but have your wits about you. It's kind of like a dad phrase, isn't it? It's not really a mum phrase. It's more of like your dad is giving you good, solid advice as a father. Very true. Yeah, your mum would would be more protective. She'd say, "Be careful!" <laughs> oh, yes, be careful! Don't go. Yeah, please don't. Go. I'm gonna don't go. Do drugs. Yes, don't do drugs. Yes. Have All right. If you're gonna do your drugs, have your wits about you. Well, I probably won't. But yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. When you do drugs, you normally don't have your wits about you. And that's when you end up losing your, 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 your money. Keys. Keys. Yeah, keys, yeah. keys to your tent. I can't get in my tent. I've lost my keys. <laughs> it's all right. I don't go off the beaten track. I've actually got a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Staying in a tent is a little bit off the beaten track. Yeah. Um, but and what it's about dirt cheap? It is. It is dirt cheap to stay in a tent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unless you're glamping. Unless you're glamping, which is glamorous camping, camping and staying in caravans and things like that. Um, but you can get quite extravagant tents, can't you? You can get really big tents and they are not dirt cheap. You know? No, no, no. You can you can go. Yeah, you can you can really splash out, pay a lot. And uh, yeah, yeah. Spend a lot of money if you're if you're glamping. I think also glamping is is like caravans as well or static homes sometimes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I stay in a little hut, which is a little <laughs> like a little tiny house. And I tell you what, Charlie, um, we really splashed out on that hut because it cost about 160 pounds for two nights. And this is a glamping trip, so we were glamping and we splashed out on a little hut it had a sink um didn't have a toilet but it had a very nice double bed good good hut i don't hut. i don't believe that they would call it a hut as the marketing team come and stay in our hut it's big and hutty <laughs> hutty yeah i know a hut normally implies that it's well very basic very very small in a rural place right? like a little one yeah, day. I would say if I was the team, I would say a log cabin or a villa or... Well, it wasn't, um, it wasn't a villa. It was a tiny little hut. That's the okay, thing. Was, was a... I'm sacked. I'm sacked. Um, the thing is, you need to remember, Chai, not everyone is as successful at marketing as we are. <laughs> now, that's the best joke he's made all day. Right. <laughs> okay. So... Um, Comment. That's a lovely comment. I'm going to read this. Nina. That's a lovely comment. Chock a block, doo doo. The day, <laughs> night is young. Oh right, just all of all of them. Thank you very much, Nina. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Nicely summarised there. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. There you go. Uh, well, someone said parsley. Parsley used to be dirt cheap in Poland, but nowadays it costs a fortune. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Parsley, I tell you what, parsley is dirt cheap in England. What I do nowadays, Charlie, I don't just buy like a packet of parsley. I will buy a pot. So I grow I grow it. I have it on my oh. my windowsill. So, oh. you know, just where the window is. Genius. So yeah. if you feel like you haven't got anything from this video yet, now you have. Yeah. Go go, go get yourself a pot of parsley and Pick it up and poke it in your pan. <laughs> Pop it in your pan. And don't poo in it. <laughs> no, don't yeah. poo in it. Yeah. And it's, uh, pardon me, Charlie, but I wanted to say that's a good way to be thrifty. So to not mm. spend too much money, which is also good vocabulary. If you're on holiday, you want to be thrifty. You know, don't spend too much money. Be sensible with your money. Yeah, very true. Very true. Yeah. Mm. And you can be thrifty in a in a place that is relatively dirt cheap, I suppose. Yeah, 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 you can. You can. Um, Harry. 
Yeah. I remember you were telling me that uh, before mm. booking this this holiday, because it was re- it was fairly spontaneous, your trip, you were like, I just need to get away. I just need to get away. Exactly. Yes. Um, I just need to get away. Uh, can we just can we just check someone? The blink army said he can only see us. Uh, you can only hear us, but can't see us. Can other people watching, can you confirm, can you see us during this broadcast? I'm pretty sure you can, but Blink Army can't. I just want to check that quickly. Okay. Um, okay. So um, to get away, yes. So to get away is it's quite simple, really, but it's a very common phrasal verb that we, we native speakers use. So it means you need a break. You need a, a holiday. A break from your usual routine. Thank you guys for confirming. Um, you need a break from your usual routine. So I hadn't had a holiday. I hadn't had a holiday for a while. And so I said to Charlie, mate, I need to get away. I'm having too many classes. I'm getting a bit burnt out, a little bit stressed. I need to get away. Okay. And if you if you feel like you need to get away uh, because you don't like your current situation, you could say, I need to get away from it all, can't you? Mm, I need to, get to, I need to just get away from it all. Like maybe in your, you're in a bad relationship or it's just ended and you want to escape. It's a bit of escapism, isn't it? To get away from it all. That's a good, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it's, it's escaping. Whereas... When you get, like, you need to get away, doesn't necessarily mean to escape. You just need to go somewhere else for a little while. But if you getting away, you're getting away from it all, then it's probably you're a bit stressed, and um, there's a or something. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so a getaway is quite casual, and uh, you might even hear it in the hairdressers. Oh, I had a lovely getaway last weekend. Oh, yeah. How was your getaway? Oh, it was very nice. And have you had any getaways recently, Charlie? Because you, um, you have a glamping vehicle. You've got a kind of hut on wheels. Um, What's so... your obsession with the word hut? I don't know. I really don't know. It's, you started it. <laughs> yeah. so, so have you had any getaways recently? Um, not in the last couple of weeks, but on Friday, I will have a getaway. Um, I'm going up to a an island called Kuran Cove, and I'm getting on a ferry, being taken over to this resort island, and we're having two nights in this little cabin. Cabin! That's a better word than hut. Ah, cabin. Put it in, Charlie. That's a really good one. Yeah. Cabin makes it sound basic, but not as basic as a hut. A hut, like you can imagine, there's nothing in it. It's just like a hut just paints a picture of a desert in in a very hot country with no water supply and just a bare bones shelter. Yeah. Thing is, cabin also doesn't scream um, a luxury, does it? Cabin. <laughs> it's, it reminds me of a horror film, like Cabin Fever. Okay, we've got to teach cabin fever to have cabin fever. What would you say that means? You, you, you're like claustrophobic. Uh, yeah, you want to get out because you've been kept in for too long. You've been in a cabin for too long and you feel sick because of it. Mm. So what you could say if you if you work from home like us, could you say, oh, I've got I've got cabin fever. I need to yeah. I need to get away. I need to yeah. get away from it all. Exactly. And that is a great reason to get a dog, Harry. If you work from home, to have the re- a reason to get out is a great strategy. So getting a dog avoids getting cabin fever. Getting? Could you say getting cabin fever? Yeah, you could say yeah. that. Yeah. Avoids having yeah. avoids you having cabin fever. Yeah. Wow. So and is that are you gonna get a dog? Do you think when you when you move out of your sister's place where you're living now, do you think you'll get a dog? We'd really like to. We'd really like to. Yeah, I want to, but uh, it might be tricky to get uh, permission to live in a, a, a rental because they don't like dogs, Ooh, landlords. Yeah. 
The doggest. <laughs> the doggest. Well, that would be you're allowed a poodle, but you're not allowed a bulldog. That would be doggest, wouldn't it? That, wouldn't that be racist? <laughs> I thought that's what you were meaning. Racist within dogs. But doggist, isn't doggist, well, doggist, I don't know if it's actually a word. Yeah, but yeah we're both I, playing here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not teaching we're not teaching real English. This is this is fake English. Harry and Charlie's English. It's but, true. But if I was to say doggist, uh, uh, it sounds like you'd have a problem with dogs in general. Like people that love cats. People that love cats and hate dogs, you could say they're doggist. Okay. Are okay. you getting Google's Google's um, confirmation on my correctness? Uh, maybe, but uh, the doggist. It's a, a short documentary, apparently. Oh, fantastic. About people that hate dogs. <laughs> yeah, they're just hitting dogs. They, they, oh, God, don't hit them. Don't hit them. So from Hasser uh, Kilic, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry. Lovely photo as well. It is impossible being thrifty in England for me. Our currency is so low, one pound costs six Turkish lira. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard. Nice use of thrifty. Let's say it's impossible to be thrifty in England. Well, actually, that sounds fine. It's, it's impossible being thrifty in England. That's good. Well said, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. All right. Harry, I think we've come to the end of the phrases that we wanted to teach. Shall we review them? We've been reviewing them throughout quite a lot, but we could give some comments. Uh, yeah, let's, let's back to comments. Yeah, let's oh, read out comments. Great. Let's comments. read out. Let's read out some comments. Yeah, absolutely. Julie, so, hello, Julie. So I'm going to take the lead. Julie okay. said, uh, "I got cabin fever after taking a 16-hour flight." Ah, yeah, a 16-hour, like. I, I guess the article A means mm -hmm. you don't use the S. A 16-hour flight. Um, cabin fever. Can you get cabin fever on a plane? I guess you can. Yeah, yeah. sounds good yeah. to me. Anywhere yeah. that's small and, and tight. Yeah. 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 So I wouldn't say a cabin fever, though. I'd say I got cabin fever. I got yes. cabin fever after taking a 16-hour flight. But, yeah, really nice example. And Maria has said, I was exhausted at work. Um, it's time to get away from it. Nice. No, so there I'd say um, I was exhausted at work. Um, so it was time to get away from it all. It was time to get away from it all. Or you could just say it was time to get away. It was time to get away. Yeah. I was exhausted at work or I was exhausted at work and needed... So I needed a getaway. So I, I needed, needed a getaway. getaway. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And then um, Uyen, Uyen Fu. I always splash out on cosmetics when I get my salary. Okay. So you like to buy makeup. Fair enough. Uh, mm -hmm. Harry, do you splash out on cosmetics when you uh, <laughs> when you get a paycheck? <laughs> when a sponsor <laughs> pays you? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess you're saying that because you've noticed I'm wearing new eye makeup. Is that why mm. you said that? Oh, I thought it was blusher as well, but maybe you've just got rosy cheeks. Maybe you're embarrassed because you're wearing eye makeup. I am. I am a bit embarrassed, yeah. I wish I didn't mention it. Wish, oh. wish I hadn't mentioned it. Wish I hadn't mentioned it. <laughs> Someone said, so, so Julia said, what is a cottage then? Uh, oh, so Julia. Good. Well, yes. What is a cottage? Julia, wonderful. Wonderful question, Julia. Um, so a cottage is like a little house, um, whereas a cab, and it would be normally made of brick, wouldn't it? It would be made of brick, probably in a village, in a rural area. Rural area. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. So it'd be a small house, small house. Like my auntie has a cottage on the coast where I go sometimes. And it has like one room on every floor. It's got three floors, maybe even four, and just one room on each. Um, so it's little. It's like a compact house. Yeah. Nice, nice place. If, yeah. if you come to England, I'd recommend staying staying in a cottage, not in my auntie's cottage. Uh, 
<laughs> Give me a text. Guys, guys, my auntie, my auntie's number is, and just give her a text and she'll be welcoming you with open arms. Um, Julia, wonderful. She's a dog person. Brilliant. I'm a dog person. Yeah. Glad you said person at the end. Otherwise, I am a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. But a dog person, that could also, it makes me think of someone who's half dog, half person. No, that's normal. That's normal. I'm just being I know. silly. I'm and then Tina, silly. hello, Tina, student. Uh, whenever I need a getaway, I always go to my hometown where everything is dead cheap. Dirt cheap. Dead cheap? Well, that's dead, dead cheap. cheap. That's good as well. You could say that. Dead cheap. Oh, that was dead, dead cheap. cheap. Yeah. But that's a bit, it's a bit northern, isn't it? It's a bit northern oh, English. They use, they use dead as a kind of. Um, intensify they'd say oh that was dead good or oh, what that was dead good that food oh that was dead cheap that was dead cheap that oh god that was dead cheap oh. <laughs> yeah and in australia they've got dead cheap carpets in port macquarie so come down and get yourself a cheap carpet fantastic oh, amazing that's good to know really good to know some dead cheap carpets and then we've got one from evelyn do you prefer a place off the beaten track so nice example. Um, it's hard I would to say. Tell. You need an auxiliary there. Do you need? Do you prefer to go to a place off the beaten track? Would you, you say? Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do you prefer places off the beaten track? Do you prefer to go to to somewhere off the beaten track? As you're not being specific, I'd maybe just say somewhere. Do you prefer to go somewhere off the beaten track? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah, that's good good and julia she's got a great one lodge can we say a lodge instead of a cabin yes a lodge a log cabin a cabin but not a hut i'm joking you can say hut you can say hut yeah sure just don't say it too much um so mm, yeah i think that's that's really good loads of good examples Someone said dead expensive. You could say you could say that absolutely. You could say, oh, oh, I wouldn't go there. It's dead expensive. Yeah, yeah. So I would or, say it's a bit. It's a bit pricey, but it's quite basic. It's a bit yeah. pricey. And, and someone's a bit pricey. That's good. A bit pricey. Francesca's also said awfully expensive. That's good as well, isn't it? Awfully expensive. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's awfully expensive. Yeah. Oof. No. Yeah. Very good. And then um, Lolly Lolly is back. I stayed home all the weekend. Uh, I might remove the. I stayed home all weekend and I started getting cabin fever. Yeah, you need to go out. You need to go out in the weekend. It's important, isn't it, Harry? It is, you need to get out of the weekend. And then one last comment, which I'm gonna bring up because maybe people aren't aware that you can play these lessons again so Hoana has said hi teachers I just, I just joined the lesson please revise today's phrases so that i can learn them too thank you for that Hoana. so these live lessons they're not just live and then they disappear into thin air you can watch this all again and you can learn them so please if you haven't watched all of this go back to the start you can go back at this at the bottom of the video you can drag it back or you could wait until we finished it and it's published and you could just watch it from the start. It'll be, um, you know, 40 minutes of real English lesson where you can learn this vocabulary and um, see lots of examples throughout. So we're not going to review everything again because we've been covering it a lot throughout this lesson. So go back, watch it again, enjoy and then catch us again for the next live and participate in the moment. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, tell us what you think of this in the comments below. Use some of the phrases. We always love it when we see the phrases being used in a, in a clever way, in a humorous or witty way. Uh, that will always grab our attention. And uh, yeah, follow us on our socials, which is Instagram and Facebook. Both of them are Real English with Real Teachers because that is our name. And we've also acronymed it over, how do I do it? Over there, over there. R E W R T over by Harry. Okay. It's really hard, isn't it? It's, it's so hard. It's like to a do. mirror. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, Life and uh, as it says down down there, oh my god, <laughs> uh, we're live every Wednesday. So come and join us for a live class <laughs> every Wednesday uh, around about nine thirty a.m. UK time. So we will see you next time. But thank you very much, and thank you, Harry. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. So next Wednesday, we'll see you then, guys. Uh, actually, we're going live on Monday as well, aren't we? We're going live on Monday, Monday yeah, morning. Yeah, we've, we've got a special one as well. So see you on Monday and Wednesday. Fantastic. Like the video. Thanks very much. Uh, we love you. It's been a long goodbye. So bye. Yeah, it has been. Yeah. Oh, uh, have you said goodbye yet? Yeah, bye. Bye. See you later, Charlie. <laughs> bye. <laughs>